The Ilyushin Il-86, which was introduced in the late 1970s, was a significant milestone in the Soviet Union's aviation history as the first wide-body airliner. This aircraft stood out by its bold design, as well as its unique qualities and the context in which it was developed. The IL-86 encountered significant obstacles that ultimately undermined its commercial viability, despite its innovative features. During a period in which Soviet aviation was trying to keep pace with Western designs, the Ilyushin Il-86 was developed. Furthermore, the Soviet Union's extensive territory necessitated the use of wide-body aircraft. Moreover, the Il-86 was designed to expand Aeroflot's network and give the Soviet Union a competitive advantage in global aviation by enabling long-haul international flights. Initially conceived in the late 1960s, the aircraft's development ended in its initial flight in 1976 and its subsequent induction into service in 1980. The design process required secret meetings with Boeing, particularly in relation to engine placement and manufacturing processes. Although the Soviet Union was unable to publicly acknowledge its contributions due to political sensitivities, this collaboration demonstrated the technological exchange between the East and West. The IL-86 stood out from its rivals by the incorporation of many innovative features. One of the most noteworthy features was its clever boarding system, which let passengers enter through air stairs that led directly from a lower deck baggage area. This design facilitated boarding at airports that lacked modern infrastructure by allowing passengers to drop off their luggage before climbing to the passenger compartment using an internal staircase. The IL-86 was capable of accommodating a maximum of 350 passengers with a standard two-class configuration that could seat 234 individuals. The interior was big, featuring a twin aisle design with a nine abreast seating configuration which provided sufficient space for passengers. The cockpit design was also new for its era, with a three-person configuration that included two pilots and one flight engineer, a configuration that was comparable to that of other aircraft, such as the DC-10. The electromagnetic pulse de-icing system was another new feature that effectively prevented ice buildup on critical surfaces while using significantly less energy than conventional systems. Each of the four Kuznetsov NK-86 turbofan engines that propelled the aircraft was capable of producing a significant amount of thrust. However, they also resulted in a higher fuel consumption than their Western counterparts. Although the EL-86 had its drawbacks, it was instrumental in the development of air transportation in the Soviet Union. Its capacity to operate from airports that were less developed made it particularly advantageous for domestic routes, where other aircraft encountered infrastructural constraints. Operational efficiency was further improved by the distinctive boarding system, which mitigated baggage handling delays. The IL-86 was also employed for international flights, including long-haul routes to destinations such as New York and Buenos Aires. Despite the competition for more efficient aircraft such as the Boeing 747, this operational versatility enabled it to sustain a presence in global aviation throughout its service life. The aircraft was underpowered, and although it was capable of producing substantial thrust with four Kuznetsov NK-86 turbofan engines, it did not meet the expected performance standards for a wide-body airliner of its dimensions. In comparison to its Western counterparts, such as the Boeing 747, this underperformance was demonstrated in a variety of ways, such as increased fuel consumption and a restricted range. The aircraft was designed with a maximal takeoff weight of approximately 250,000 pounds in mind. However, the thrust to weight ratio was not optimal, which resulted in difficulties during the takeoff and climb phases. Consequently, the IL-86 encountered operational efficiency and payload capacity challenges, which ultimately influenced its market performance. The situation was further complicated by production issues. The development process required more than a decade, resulting in a modest production volume of approximately 103 units. The IL-86's market impact was substantially reduced by its sluggish rollout in comparison to its rivals, such as the Boeing 747, which had already become a global standard for long-haul travel by the time the IL-86 was introduced.
Furthermore, the Isle 86 was somewhat outdated by the time it was operational due to developments in aviation technology. Its operational capabilities were eclipsed by newer aircraft that provided superior performance and efficiency, resulting in a decrease in usage as airlines modernized their fleets. Although the Ilyushin Il-86 showed numerous innovative features and played significant roles in Soviet aviation history, its technical limitations and production challenges ultimately rated it as a mixed success rather than a commercial triumph. Performance issues and an inability to effectively contend against Western designs, such as the Boeing 747, overshadowed the aircraft's unique design elements. Therefore, the Il-86 continues to be an intriguing chapter in the annals of aviation history, as it embodies the aspirations and obstacles encountered by Soviet aerospace engineering during its era. The Ilyushin Il-86 has been involved in numerous crashes throughout its operational existence. In total, there have been at least 10 accidents, two of which resulted in fatalities. A moderate safety record can be given to the Il-86, as its operational history includes both incidents and accidents. The aircraft was mainly used by Aeroflot and other post-Soviet airlines until it was retired from passenger service in the early 2000s. However, some variants are still in military service today. The Ilyushin Il-86's development served as the foundation for the Ilyushin L-96, as it offered essential insights and experience in the design of wide-body aircraft within the Soviet aviation industry. Now, do you think efficient engines are the main weakness of the Russian airliners? Let us know in the comments. Please like and share our videos and subscribe to our channel. Please also take membership in our channel to encourage us.